Hey y'all, I'm Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com, and I wanted to show you how I make a pair of these metal skull dice. When I started, I didn't think there was much to know about dice. I have sets of them in all different shapes and different materials, but I'd never thought much about them. I never knew that those little dots were called pips, or that there are right-handed and left-handed dice, or that when you add the opposite sides of a six-sided die together, the numbers will always add up to seven. So, now that I knew more than I ever wanted to about dice, I started modeling in some CAD software. I'd been working on some other skull-themed jewelry at the time, so the idea for a skull-shaped die came naturally. Once finished, they were sent to the printer, and a few hours later, I had my dice. I know the hype about 3D printing has come down a bit over the years, but it's still an amazing feeling to hold a physical object that not too long ago only existed as some data on a hard drive. After a quick clean and cure, they were ready to be added to a sprue tree. Casting a printed part can be tricky, and I use a quicker burnout than what's recommended, so I attach some wax rods that will act as vents for blowing out ash residue later on. The sprue trees are placed in a flask, and investment powder is mixed and poured. It's then degassed in a vacuum chamber to help remove any trapped air bubbles. Investment is simply a plaster-like mix that can take a great deal of heat and retain a great amount of detail. It's left for a couple of hours to dry. Once dry, the flasks enter the kiln to burn out the resin prints. Shortly before casting, I use a vacuum pump on those vents we added earlier to help remove any of the remaining ash residue. There's a lot of tiresome steps involved in casting metal, a lot of measuring and calculating and waiting, but this part of the job will never get old. These dice are being cast in brass at a temperature of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. There's some nasty fumes involved when melting brass, so I'm wearing a respirator in addition to running the fume extractor. I always add a small amount of boric acid to the investment when casting resin parts. It makes the investment very hard and very difficult to break free.
to see a successful casting brings a sense of relief and accomplishment. It's finally knowing that all the careful preparation and hours of waiting have paid off. After a bit of cleanup, these dice are given a tumbled finish. This is a homemade magnetic tumbler, obviously, but that doesn't stop it from putting a nice burnished finish onto metal. An antiquing solution is painted onto every surface, and then the high areas are wiped clean. These dice are definitely the coolest thing I've ever made. I have fun just holding them and looking at them. But of course, they're even more fun to roll. I also made a pair in silver because, well, of course I would. I like to think of them as jewelry you can play with. These dice and other fun jewelry can be found on my website, as well as on Etsy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, I'm Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.